Hi, this is Dr. Dan Pertzer, danpertzermd.com. Welcome to my Facebook Live. It's 7 p.m. It's uh, January 31st. What? Microphone. You're kind of in front of your microphone. There you oh, go. should I move it like this? You're much better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. Uh, January 31st, 2021. Uh, lots of anxiety, stress. Um, I'm not sure why. I reckon I'll try and get into that here in a minute. But this <laughs> is my Facebook Live on top 10 tips on estradiol plus the top eight natural anti-anxiety options. Yes, I add it. I keep adding them, keep wanting more. Um, you know, bananas are not for stress, right? Bananas? I just, yeah, they, I, they make you more when stressed? I was in college, I used to eat bananas for stress. Uh. Uh, that's weird. Okay, so <laughs> across from me is Jackson. Uh, say hi, Jackson. Hello. Uh, behind me, he doesn't mind me, does he? He did not say hi, Jackson. <laughs> behind me on my left is Grogu or Baby Yoda. You can barely see his you. little oh, really? ear. I'll zoom in on him real quick. Oh, dear. Wrong way. That's my Baby Yoda, Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> my Baby okay. Yoda. Um, and the other side of the room is my arch nemesis, Brecken, <laughs> who is like my slave master on the show. Brecken, what do you have to say for yourself for being my slave master? Apparently, we are now enemies. <laughs> arch nemesis. <laughs> More like that. frenemies. Frenemies. Frenemies or yeah, what is that? I don't even know what a frenemy is. That's something you, <laughs> showing your, your age. generation made showing up. Your yeah, age. seriously. <laughs> it's like French fried enemy. No. That's it. Yep. <laughs> hey, um, don't we sell that fifteen percent percent off sale at physiciandesign.com? Yeah, but it's kind of a secret. Oh, don't we don't we still have that fifteen percent off sale to at physiciandesign.com? Mm-hmm. Just for tonight, for those people watching. Do you want to tell them the code? Tomorrow. Yeah, the, the code is 15% off today. Do they have to make that thumping sound? Yes. <laughs> was that with your marimba? Kalimba. Before, did you have, was that your flugelhorn? Not the flugelhorn. So Jackson's Everybody. taking up the flugelhorn. Jackson was like a five-star, 5A five high school trumpet player. He was really good. He could have probably gotten scholarships, but... Um, but went he to chose Mexico another path. instead. Um, <laughs> Ran away to Mexico, to Mexico instead. <laughs> yeah, to um, to go on an LDS mission, church mission. But um, so, um, but now he's taking up the flugelhorn. He's been playing the piano. Are you practicing love songs? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you can find a, if your daughter is like a music major and loves the guy, you can play. You said you can play the what is that thing called? The carimba. Kalimba. The kalimba <laughs> with your toes. And the, your piano with your fingers and your flugelhorn with your lips. Um, that's we were telling. I also play the recorder and the, oh, I can't remember the other little flute thing. Uh, no, that's all right. Oh, the ocula, dweeble, the dweeble ocula, flute. Oculus? Oculus? No, uh, that's something else. Yeah, it's something like that. Uh, that's all right. The octopus. <laughs> says he play. Yeah. How, do you, how do you play that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm getting old. Okay, so go ahead and play the theme song, please. What? That was supposed to be Star Wars. <laughs> I tricked you. <laughs> I tricked you. <laughs> it's not Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, Grogu is sad. <laughs> I see a tear rolling out his little green face. Uh, that was an interesting rendition. Um, so, are you engaged yet? Or do we? So, do we have grandkids coming from either of you? Because Breckett, you're married. Mm hmm. We need a little sprouts. Not this year. You have one grandson. That's enough. He's an armful. I'll tell you that. Yeah, little, why do you want more? He's a little tater hopper, man. <laughs> tater hopper. So um so we can we trade you in, you two, and see what we can get see we can get something better on the backside. Mm-hmm. Don't okay. you have like ten other kids? Why are you focusing on us? Because <laughs> we're the ones you can with publicly my rage. <laughs> I can humiliate you <laughs> on, on national world radio. Okay. <laughs> Uh, does that comment that we want to trade you in cause you anxiety by any chance? Just it did, a little. It did me. I felt it spiking <laughs> in my head a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of anxiety, it is so thick right now you can cut it with a lightsaber. Stress, anxi anxiety, nightmares are way up. I'm hearing about it every day. Do you know why, Brecken? I'm guessing probably because Disneyland's still closed. How did you? Why did you? You, you nailed it. I just know you. You got it in one. I'm your arch nemesis. So I can read your mind or something now. Disneyland is still closed. It makes us sad. And that's the reason for the stress, right? Yep. Yeah, that's all we'll put on there. So, okay. Um, 
So here's what I suggest is natural anxiety options. These are really good. We I deal with them every day. I get a lot of anxious people. Oh my gosh, it's over the you know off off the charts right now. Um if you look up my, for my designs for health physician account, are you posting that now? No, I'm answering another question. Oh. I can post them. Post my designs for health account and some maybe can you post a code or are we love Yeah, I can do that? the the oh can I put the first Mm, not that one. Yeah, I'll put my email, and you can email me for the email or code. for the discount codes. So you first you need to start with your favorite calming essential oil or blend, like peace and calming. Duh, that's what it's for. And man, so many women and some men just really love that stuff. So that's a great option. But if you're not young living, you ought to try some GABA. Um, GABA is the brain's natural benzodiazepines Valium that you make to calm yourself down. I like, I like, I've, I've tried a number of GABAs because I have genetic errors um, that support the use of GABA. Um, I have GAD1 errors. And so GAD1, you can't make enough GABA. So if you have GAD1 heterozygosities or homozygosities on your, on your NutraHacker or your, um, or your uh, Pro7, we look at anxiety issues with the Pro 7. A lot of the codes are for anxiety issues. But um, GABA, Pharma GABA from Designs for Health is the one I use. It's chewable. I'll chew one at 9 p.m., one at 10 p.m. when I take my melatonin. Also take an insomnitol chewable or Amipro, whichever one I have. Um, if you're not young living, go for the insomnitol chewable. Ah, it's Designs for Health also. Insomnitol chewable. It's made of melatonin and L-theanine. So I take one before bed, one at bedtime with the insomnitol chewable. And if I wake up super anxious in the middle of the night, I chew another Pharmagaba. And yes, I've been waking up at 2 or 3 o'clock anxious having nightmares. What is GABA? It's gamma aminobutyric acid, which sounds like something that was invented in the 70s. But we actually make it in our brain, our GAD1 genes. Make it for us to allow us to calm down and calm our brain down. I just don't make a lot of it. Yeah. And what's Designs for Health? Oh, he's tired tonight. I am tired. I put a long <laughs> weekend. Um, Designs for Health, is a, they only sell to physicians. They're back east, Connecticut. Um, they're a really good company. We make a couple of products for them. But everything's got to be validated. Everything's got to work or they don't sell it. They're just a stellar company like Young Living, but they're not an MLM. They're just a direct-to-physician company. Uh, that's why I gave you my code because I don't want to order it for you. You can use my the, my website and just order it yourself. Um, so Design for Health and Somnital Chewable or Young Living Nimu Pro. Um, they're both got a melatonin in it, Breck and Don't Ask. Um, that's what they do, and you can chew them up. So I'll chew the Insomnital Chewable up. With the um, Pharma GABA, and I'm out. Um, Number four would be lithium synergy. It's a small amount of lithium orotate. It's not a drug. Not lithium like a battery? No, <laughs> not lithium like a drug. <laughs> uh, there's lithium carbonate, which is given in huge doses. No, we're talking a tiny doses because you need extra lithium in your diet if you have anxiety. So instead, you can get it through lithium synergy one or two at night. I mean, I'll get the on tonight. What's up with that? Um, <laughs> number five would be Amazon Z Z D Cairo C H I R O dash Inositol. I N O S I T O L. Fifty milligrams. You try one around three p.m. or four p.m. You'll know if it brings down your constant anxiety. Um, what is that? It's a B vitamin that you can't absorb properly if you have the A T G sixteen L one error, which causes bad anxiety. And if you're double homozygous on it, it causes horrible anxiety. Yeah. Where you, you the kids don't want to come out of their closet, they don't want to come out of their bed, they're hiding under the bed, they won't go to class in college. Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get you to do some jumping jacks or something. So, okay, then the Amazon um just talked about... It's so also progesterone, YLEO Progestins Plus, well, or Design Field Progestivale. For women, right? Right. Yeah, just some letting people know. Men shouldn't take progesterone. No, they should not take it. But uh, and I hear 
naturopaths and other doctors suggest it all the time, but it's wrong. It will cause a decrease in libido and vascular inflammation in men. It's Probably not causing good. more in women, anxiety. It does all the opposite. Yeah. It's really good. So, um, do you have any comments about it? I really like Progestins Plus. I use that. The smell's so comforting at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's the number one personal care product at Young Loving, and uh, I get to help design it. So yeah, okay. Apparently, I just got told this a minute ago by Jackson, who's looked over the paperwork. Our physician designed brain support micro PQQ micro ubiquinol helps reduce cortisol levels. It does. That's been validated, I guess, by FDA and all that. The Mitsubishi in the studies, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, that's cool. And number eight, yoga. Now that all made me anxious because I'm not that good at yoga, though I'm getting better. I'm more like a yoga clod. So, okay, <laughs> so, is a yoga so let me go clod? through them again. Your favorite common essential oil blend, that's number one. Number two, GABA in the form of Design Health Pharma GABA chewable. Number three, Design Health and Somnitol chewable or Young Living Me Pro chewable. Number four, Design Health Lithium Synergy, one or two, uh, bedtime. Number five, Amazon Zazi D Cairo Inositol. Because these people can't or can't absorb regular Inositol. It's actually the mirror image of Inositol. Weird, I know, but they absorb it fine. They really like it. It's really noticeable when it helps their anxiety. Uh, number six for women, Young Living Progestins Plus or Design for Health Progestive Ale. It's going to yawn my way through this. I'm Someone not really said tired you should all. snort um, some peppermint or something. Yeah, really, I know. Physician <laughs> Design Brain Support Micro PQQ Micro Ubiquinol. Becoming our number one bestseller for obvious reasons. And number eight, yoga. Okay, top eight, best eight. So um, how about we start on my top ten estrogen tips? Cool. Um, um, so, But, yes. you know, it's not just going to be ten with you. I think we learned that no, lesson. No, it's definitely ten exactly. It's it's a perfect ten. Are you sure? Absolutely. You're yeah. positive. Solid on that. <laughs> uh, Jackson, can you take your marimba or kalimba, whatever that is, and play a triumphant march now? Like a Star Wars march. <laughs> that was it. Almost got it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the wedding song they played at the end of that one, wasn't it? Uh, that's just the main theme of Star Wars, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really watch Star Wars. Okay. Um, I guess I should because I have a Grogu now. You love Star Wars. Okay, this is Dr. Purser's top 10 tips on estrogens or estradiol. Number one, estrogens are critical to making you a woman. That's what gives you your curves, your soft skin, your wrinkle-free skin, your thick hair, your luscious lips, your bosoms, everything. It's really critical as to what makes you a woman. Got it? Makes sense. That was easy. Mm -hmm. Number two, I often suggest Clary Sage essential oil or a scleriol derivative, like scleriol um, scleresence plus, or ladies scleriol, or whatever. It's uh, I so it really mimics estrogens, but it's safe for women who have had breast cancer. It actually gives a thirty percent reduction in recurrence of breast cancer. It can give you. I have about eight hundred of these labs, eight hundred labs. So it's highly validated, at least in my book. Uh, on women who should not have normal estradiol levels, who have normal estradiol levels with clary sage. They're 70 years old, they're postmenopausal, they have no ovaries, all that. I don't think it's really producing estradiol. I think the lab equipment thinks it's so similar that it reads it, that it reads it like it's estradiol. Mm -hmm. I can't find literature to support that. Nothing. There's nothing anywhere. I just have 800 lives. Well, probably 1,000 now. That was oh, 800 wow. a few years ago. Yeah. Um, that I did a convention and stuff like that. I asked Gary Young what it could be. He said, he said no, it's 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 uh, Clary Sage. It's got scary all in it, and it, it mimics estradiol. And I'm like, okay, but it's not estradiol, so it won't give you a breast cancer risk. Though, oddly enough, and I'll get to this later, pure estradiol taking postmenopausally We'll give you a 30% reduction in breast cancer risk, too. That's a women's health initiative. Yeah. 
That'll be in one of the, the studies I'll tell you about in a minute. So number four, no. your estradiol cannot be too high, but your progesterone can be too low. I hear this all the time. This is the mistake known as trying to balance your hormones. Don't try it. You don't. And everyone's like, do I still remove an ovary? Should What should we do? Is there a way to suppress my estrogens? All that. No, you raise your progesterone to match it. That's really how you balance it, but it doesn't really happen. You just need to get a good estradiol level, a good progesterone level if you have a good estradiol level. A good progesterone level is well above 10 nanograms per milliliter. So What does happen? Like, what are people confused? Like, why? They think it- they've heard all this talk about balancing your hormones and you can't do it. Uh, there's no ba- magic balancing. It's just increasing your progesterone. So, so you don't bring down your estradiol. You don't remove an ovary. You don't get a hysterectomy. You uh, bring up your progesterone levels. Okay. Makes sense. Um, number five, estradiol or estrogens rarely get rid of hot flashes or night sweats. Now I'm talking about the creams or taking it orally uh, or a patch. Though progesterone usually does. I see this mistake made all the time by doctors who put patients on estradiol cream to get rid of their night sweats or hot flashes. What do you mean by rarely, though? Well, in about 2 or 3% of the time, maybe 2% of the time, women who have hot flashes, it'll go away when you put them on estradiol. I, I try progesterone first because it's 95% of the time it'll get rid of hot flashes and night sweats. But 2 or 3% of the time, um, it's estradiol. So if they don't get better with the progesterone, I'll add estradiol. Interesting. So 6 Postmenopausally, estradiol cream rarely helps reverse vaginal atrophy or dryness. Though I see again, it used all the time for this. It does not do it. I've never seen it. I mean, uh, that's not true. I've seen it happen once or twice. But the other 3,000 times I've seen it go away quickly with compounded testosterone cream. Vaginal dryness, atrophy does not go away with estradiol, but maybe once or maybe twice. You know, I have several thousand patients. Uh, literally, it's always the testosterone cream that does it. Why is that? It thickens the wall. It brings in the mucus. It helps with uh, fluids. It helps a lot of things. Why would estrogen not help it? I don't know. Mm. It just doesn't do the trick. It, yeah. It'll say it in the literature. The literature is bogus. It's not right. It doesn't do it. Uh, sometimes it makes estradiol and testosterone cream together. And you've got a patient we got to do this for. She's probably listening. We'll do that for you tomorrow. Um, okay, number seven. You need to know about the 10-year window. Let me explain. Yeah. Let's hear about that. <laughs> really? 10-year window. I want to learn the about it. The 10-year window. Have you ever heard me explain it before? Yeah, I know this one. I have many times, and I still don't know. 10-year <laughs> window says, if you go through menopause, natural or surgical or traumatic, and you stop making estradiol and all that, no more periods for six months. If you wait 10 years to start oral estradiol, you can't do it. You should not do it. It'll cause you to clot or have a stroke or a heart attack. If you take an oral estradiol anytime in that 10 years window, it, set, it, it restarts the clock. Now, if you get put on estradiol uh, and stop it after 12 years, then the 10 year, 10 year window starts. Um, But anytime you go off estradiol or quit making it for 10 years, you've now gone past the 10-year window and should not be put on oral estradiol. You get a vascular inflammation during those 10 years, and taking the oral estradiol and passes through the liver causes the release of metalloproteinases. Sound familiar, vaguely? Metalloproteinases. Um, We deal with metallothionines with fibromyalgia, but yeah, so metalloproteinases in those will break loose out of your vascular system and go to your brain or go to your heart and, and either kill you or cause a stroke. Scary. That's why you hear that estradiol will cause you a stroke or heart attack. Most doctors who've heard of the 10-year window don't understand it. They think it's once you're past 10 years after you're, you're going through menopause, you should never, you shouldn't get on any hormones. And it's not true. You just shouldn't take oral estradiol. I will put women on a cream or a patch. The other part of the 10-year window, or the reason I won't put women on oral estradiol is that they have hypertension because they get 
when they're postmenopausal because they get that those metalloproteinases and it's a problem. So if they are if they're already on it and develop hypertension, it's fine. You should stay on it. Why do I say that? I don't know. Why do you say that? Well, number eight. <laughs> I got, got sucked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> Went aloud and started within the 10-year window, meaning she didn't have hypertension. She didn't have factor V Leiden. She hasn't had breast cancer. And it's still within the 10-year window. And I put her on oral estradiol. It's much better and preferred over topical estradiol or the estradiol patch. How come? Because oral estradiol convenes or conveys a much reduced risk for cardiovascular issues like stroke, heart attack, and diabetes. The big three killers in women. The big three. 80%, 90% of women die from those. So when you, if you can take oral estradiol longer, it protects you more. Yeah. And you might get breast cancer, but it's not from the oral estradiol. Even if you have ER receptor positive breast cancer, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, it does not. Um, it doesn't mean you've um, that the estradiol caused the breast cancer. It just happens to be your cell happen to have a, a ER or estrogen receptor on it. Your breast cancer cell, um, just chance. You could have a progesterone receptor on it too. That definitely doesn't cause breast cancer either. So, but I still will treat that woman that has breast cancer. I won't give her oral estradiol. She's ER positive. So, just to be safe. Number nine in the Women's Health Initiative, the big, big study that everyone quoted several years back, also called the WHI, which was a huge study involving women taking unopposed estradiol, or I mean, that means estradiol without, they were using the synthetic progestational agents, not natural progesterone or opposed with synthetics for years. It showed that taking unopposed estradiol alone did not cause breast cancer. That it actually caused a 30% reduction in breast cancer risk. Adding adequate progesterone takes the breast cancer risk to a 500% reduction. It's a big deal if when, you, when you combine them together. But estradiol does not, is, sorry, that's a real, that's a real speculative argument. Real technical argument, but it doesn't cause breast cancer. You can have ER positive breast cancer, but it doesn't mean it's causing an effect in place. 10. Ready for 10? Mm hmm. Oh. Should be the last one, right? No, uh, I think I've got a couple oh. more. So it wasn't quite exactly. It's 10 plus. <laughs> Estradiol and patch orally can prevent or help prevent osteoporosis. That's true. Also helps your skin from wrinkling. Also, uh, will keep your hair thick and all that, but it does not prevent heart attacks or strokes or diabetes. So it's still a good option, but it's just not an ideal option. 10 plus 1. Oral estradiol can cause clotting if you're outside the 10-year window or have certain genetic errors. What genetic errors are those? Mainly factor V Leiden is the big, is the big dog. Um, yeah, factor V Leiden. So big. just to confirm, because I've seen this question a couple times, you should not take any form of estradiol or, or estrogen after the 10-year window, right? That's not true at all. Okay. You can't take oral estradiol after the 10-year window. There we window. go. You can take cream or patch. Okay. And should. Okay. And I never, I women ask me all the time, how should long should I do this? Because they've heard doctors talk similar about, well, you shouldn't do it after so many years usually 10 years after you've been through menopause, because the doctor's kind of got a screwed up mis, mis Fire. entropic idea. I don't know. His idea about 10-year windows is not right. So, so um, it's not correct. Um, 10 plus 2. I no longer check men's estradiol levels when they're on testosterone. How come? Um Men, well, first let me let me tell you why they want yeah, to do. Why it. would they're you? like I'm getting man boobs from taking this testosterone, or they think they are, and and uh, I've actually never really noticed them, but um, but when I get a BYU or University of Utah six foot eight, three hundred twenty pound football player in my office, and I check his testosterone level, and it's fourteen hundred naturally 
and his estradiol level is through the roof, should I give him something to lower his estradiol level? No. Why? Because he's healthy. He is healthy. He's natural. And I'd also get him kicked out of Division One football if I gave him something to lower estradiol level. Yeah. It's, it's a, it, it's, you can't do that. Um, it's on the band list for those guys. Um, estradiol conveys cardiovascular protection for men. So if your testosterone level is high enough and you have a high estradiol level, you get cardiovascular protection from that. Mm -hmm. I don't treat that anymore. And I'll argue with my guys, they want to get treated for it. I'll probably tell them to find someone else. Let me do a 10 plus three. <laughs> okay. 10 plus three. You break estradiol down. So this is number 13. You break estradiol down into two pathways. One's a good pathway that's breast, ca breast tissue friendly. One's a bad pathway. That's the 16-alpha hydroxyestrone. 16-alpha hydroxyestrone pathway. Um, that breaks your estradiol into a not friendly or breast cancer causative form of estradiol breakdown. 16-alpha hydroxyestrone causes breast cancer. Japanese women don't tend to do that because they eat a, a lot of colocalciferous vegetables and quite a different diet than we eat here in the U.S. Um, but when they move here to the U.S., they get, so they have one in 30 risk of breast cancer in Japan. It's one in eight here in the U.S. And so they convert quickly to the one in eight if they adapt our food. Someone figured out that this was, there's something you could do for this. It's called DEM. I know um, um, Design Trail has DIM-EVAL, E-V-A-I-L. That's quite good. One a day. It's one of the best DIMs out there. Again, it's validated like they do so many things. Um, especially if you have COMT errors on your 23andMe or NutraHacker. COMT errors tend to push you over into the alpha hydroxy estrone breakdown. Also, the CYP B errors on the first page of the Nutra Hacker tend to cause the same type of al uh, 16 alpha hydroxy estrone breakdown. So it's getting really technical, but you want to you want to negate that risk by taking dim eval from Design 12. Or your favorite form of dim off Amazon. I don't care. I'm just telling you the best place I know right now for getting stuff. So okay, those are my top 10. 13. 14. 13. <laughs> Top 10 tips on a shot. Can, can you post those somewhere for me? Yeah, I actually can. And we have a lot of people who want them. So it okay, doesn't yeah. have all your exact answers. But guys, remember, you can always listen to this again. It's always available. We have a podcast. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. Oh, don't we? Don't I have? Yeah, we're my podcast. Everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music. Does anyone listen to them? Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Why? This one lady emailed me. She listens to us every morning on her walks, and she learns stuff every day. <laughs> and so wow. we're everywhere for you guys to always be learning. You know, feel free to listen again and again. I'm listening to definitely more stressful stuff than they are. Okay. <laughs> so are there any questions? <clears throat> Plenty yeah. of questions. Well, um, for a menopausal woman, should she be on estradiol or estrol? I am not. Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. I am not a fan of E E2. Which is estrol. Or S E3, sorry, which is estrol. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. It's not breast cancer friendly. Or sorry, it's not breast friendly like estradiol is. That's why you can get estradiol readily at any pharmacy. It's cheap, one milligram or two milligrams. Tablets, it's also called estrase. It's just not the big breast cancer cause of like estriol is. Yeah. And I know some doctors think estriol is the cat's meow. They have all their arguments. Sorry, I wrote a textbook on preventive medicine. <laughs> I'm going to argue that estriol is not breast friendly. So, yeah. I don't, no, I don't use it. Makes sense. Um, is clary sage okay to use if you have uterine fibroids or yeah. estrogen? Safe? Yeah. Okay. Clary sage is always safe to use. You will smell a little funkadelic, <laughs> like a hippie, but it's all right. Someone commented, if the oil smells bad to you, that means you need it more. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I need clear stage more. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, no. That's funny. <laughs> um, is pregnolone something that women should be taking? Yes, two a week, 25 milligrams. 
I like Young Living's PD-8020 to a week. But if you've had a family history of breast cancer, meaning mom, a primary history, you, your mom, your sister, or your daughter, you shouldn't take DHEA orally. Yeah. I know um, Young Living's out of PD-8020 right what? now. What? I just got, someone was asking me for recommendations actually just this morning, but I didn't know. Do you know if there's any other pregnenolone recommendations? Yeah, they have a Prenolone Plus cream you can use topically. Okay. Which is PD which is a PD eighty twenty in cream which form. Cream form. Cool. Which is always safe to use. Yeah. Um, how do you protect yourself with no estrogen on board from breast cancer? Her sister has breast cancer. Claire has, Sage. Claire Sage. Lowers Sorry, the risk by thirty percent. Yeah. Totally safe. And lots of progesterone. Now I was told by our team at USC, the pharmacologists there that if patients have breast cancer, even if it's PR positive, that's progesterone receptor positive, they should take more breast cancer. If you go no. to PubMed and look at progesterone and search the word apoptosis and progesterone, those two together, you'll see, I can't remember, it's like 1,400 articles come up. They should take more progesterone? You progesterone should. causes apoptosis of breast cancer cells. Yeah. Pops them. So in my breast cancer survival guide book. in my progesterone book i talk about that i show the literature i show the articles i show all that that's great references i always reference don't sue me sue the reference i haven't been sued. <laughs> <laughs> and progesterone isn't the same thing as estrogen no not at all no they're they're, two, they're two cats in different bags so to speak in different bags um sorry i'm just scrolling through I always like what you say about progesterone. A, a low progesterone level is caused by estrogen dominance. Is that correct? No. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't even know where you got that. I kind of remember you saying something like that at one point. I Can guess. you have high or low progesterone from having high estrogen? No. Oh. Or you just tend to have higher levels of estrogen when you have low levels of progesterone? No. Then what's my family? Because a lot of the women in our You guys don't make enough progesterone for a number of reasons, which we've delved into. Genetic errors. Calm tea. You're kind of them. mutants. So fun. Yeah, you're, 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 yeah, a lot of calm tea errors. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't affect your progesterone manufacturer. Uh. That affects your estradiol breakdown. That's the secret why I think everyone in your family gets breast cancer. Yeah. Those calm tea errors are heavy. Or as Yoda would say, the force of calm tea is not with you or something. <laughs> I probably blew that completely. That didn't even sound like Yoda at all. Oh, the force of... <laughs> oh, no, I'm no. not going to do Yoda. Okay, go ahead. What are the symptoms of high estrogen? Are there any? Yeah, bloating, heavy periods, um, endometriosis type symptoms, stuff like that. Yeah. Breast tenderness, all that. If, if you start on progesterone, it causes breast tenderness. Why is it causing the breast tenderness? Do you know? Mm -mm. What did I say progesterone causes? Apoptosis. Apoptosis of pre-malignant or breast cancer cells. So if your breasts get tender when you take a lot of progesterone, what's it doing? It's popping those cells. Popping what cells? Cancer, cancer cells. cells. Or pre-malignant cells is exactly what it's doing. Dang. So, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, the American College of Epidemiology, 1981, did a huge review of, of 50 years. Yeah, 50 years. That's 81 um, of, of progesterone studies. And what they found, that women who had progesterone levels above 10, uh, some might say above 20 nanograms per deciliter, that they had a 500-plus um, percent decrease risk of breast cancer. That's huge. That is. That's not to be ignored. And all cancer risk overall was down 1,000%. So progesterone is magic for you women. Yeah. So. It's good stuff. That's my little progesterone book, which has been number one. A couple times. A number of times on Amazon. Yeah. Overall. Okay, go ahead. Back to kind of anxiety. Um, should people be taking all the products you listed or should no, they start with? No, try one at a time. And start or with. Or get your genetics. Get a Pro 7 first. Or, or get, send me your... your um, your Nutra Hacker complete, and I'll tell you if you need them. That makes sense. Or you can just guess. I put it out there. 
For those of you who are really suffering, don't have the money to get tested or time, try to start with the Pharma GABA. Try the Zazie next. Try it. I'll put my hands down. <laughs> Why were they blocking my face? Was it like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should okay. women um, go on bioidentical hormones after getting hysterectomy? Yes. If there's no reason, for, if there's not a reason for them not to, yes. Yeah. Should you base, like someone was asking, should you go by estrogen or estradiol test results or both? Estradiol. Estradiol. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through. Is there any age you should stop taking hormones like progesterone or estrogen? Yeah, if your doctor tells you to or you get breast cancer or something. Reassess, talk to someone who knows about them, talk to the pharmacist, talk to a doctor like me who's written 30 books about stuff like this. <laughs> what testing do you recommend women to get for progesterone or hormones? Estrogen? Yeah, serum estradiol, serum progesterone, serum free and total testosterone, a TSH, FT3, FT4, DHEA, SO4. Um, pretty well covered yeah. it. Yeah, and, um, you can get them through Direct Labs. I'll link on my website. It's super cheap. And on Direct Labs, if you search Purser in the search bar, it has Dr. Purser's initial female and male panel. Oh, now you tell me. No, you know that. You've I had that for that. literally no, seven that. years. Sorry, I forget 800 things. <laughs> um, it has a really good comprehensive list of all the hormone levels that Dr. Purser usually gets. So that's a good base to start with or at least look at. Um, what if you're postmenopausal and get hot flashes after taking progesterone? Need more? Might need more. Might need uh, estradiol or, or DHEA or or um, testosterone. I've even seen thyroid uh, get rid of hot flashes once or twice, but rare. And do you prefer like serum blood levels or saliva? Serum. We All the literature is based on serum. All the research we did, all the work I've done, all my books are based on serum levels. Yeah. I'm trying to see. I know. So I know. Salivary levels are popular. You can get them, but they just don't mean much to me. We tried to use them in, in research, but we could never make them work right. Should oh. you be taking progesterone and estrogen every day? Or does it kind of depend on the person? It uh, depends on the person, but usually it's every day. And does Clary Sage play nice with progesterone? Yeah. <laughs> yep. These are great questions. What's the difference between estrogen and estrogen and estradiol? Estrogen uh, covers a broad number of hormones: estriol, estradiol, est uh, um, estriol, and others. Seven, several others. Uh, well, estradiol, seventeen beta estradiol, if you want to be exact, is what you make in your ovaries. Mm. It usually breaks down into other things. There's also estrone. Sorry, I forgot estrone, which is women That's always it. produce it. Uh, it's from their diet, from their bowels. What is it called? Estrone? Estrone. Man, I've never even heard that. Yeah. Estradiol is from pregnancy. It's the fourth so, estradiol or fourth estrogen. Sorry. Gotcha. Um, do you prefer progesterone trochi or capsule? Is that how you say tro trochi? There's some really good topicals out there. I know we've developed some of them. But I like the uh, like the trochi, mm -hmm. the rapid dissolve trochi, mm -hmm. trituret actually. Trochies are a little awkward. So on my list of what I prefer, trituret, art, rapid dissolve trituret RDT is number one. Number two would be a trochi. Number three, capsule. Number four, um, a serum. Number five, there's not a number five. I don't like creams. They don't work. Yeah. They go bad after about 30 days and just... Uh, um, what level do you prefer the progesterone and estrogen to be at? 10 and 50, ideally. 10 on the on the progesterone, 50 on the, There's this easy number. Remember, I won't tell you the, the, the metrics will be on that, but it's, it's 10 and 50, typically, Where in the will, U.S. Yeah, that's good. Where do you recommend someone, it's 20 years after she got a hysterectomy, a complete one, Without any hormone replacement, where should she start? Probably testosterone. She's probably dry, miserable, um, not feeling sexy, 
um, all that. I'd start with testosterone. That'll make her a believer. Then I'll add in progesterone and probably do that shot last. What causes hormonal headaches, the one that come monthly? Lack of progesterone, lack of adequate amounts of progesterone. You're not, you're not creating enough progesterone. Progesterone typically gets rid of vascular inflammation around the time of the cycle. It's hard for me to focus on the camera lens. I know yeah. everyone thinks I'm looking away and everything. We can. It's the lighting. No, it's all right. It's 740. Are we done? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I talked to everyone. You're off. <laughs> I love you guys. Times are hard. Don't know how much harder it'll get, but I love you all. Um, hang in there. Uh, I'm here for you. I'll help where, where I can, when I can. Um, and God bless. Go in good health. Um, and may the force be with you. And Grogu too. <laughs> and God. Dr. Dan Purser, I'm out. 